Hey everyone, this is Dan Deppin. I've got another video here and using Excel for mortgage notes. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about one year ROI and IRR uh, when I'm looking at analyzing performing notes. So here I've got uh, this is actually from a tape that I got last fall, and I, I deleted out the information that, that wasn't relevant to what we're doing right here. But I got a bunch of look, performing loans here. It's with the UPB, the monthly payment interest rates. Um, the seller provided, they call it estimate of payments remaining, which is I don't know why they said estimate. Um, and then their BPO amount, which we actually don't need for this video. And then in this one, they had pricing that they were looking for. Um, you don't always get pricing. A lot of times uh, you're, you're coming up with your own bids, but you can still use the other stuff I'm going to talk about in a minute to develop what, what your bid should be. So first thing I'll talk about is the one year ROI, or I think of it as like a simple ROI. And a lot of investors use this to get a rough idea of what the value of a performing note should be. And your one year return is just 12 of the monthly payments divided by the price you paid, right? So 12 times payments. Oops, oops, if I hit equal sign. 12 times number of payments and divided by the price that we paid. Boom. And we need it in terms of a percentage. And I want to see a decimal. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Um, as far as what you should be targeting, um, I've heard a lot of people say 15%. As we get into this, I, th I think you'll see that mileage varies a lot and so for me this is really not even the key factor that I use I prefer to use to key off of IRR although there are a bunch of other factors that go into whether or not I'm going to bid on a performing note or not um, so as we go through this don't look for hard and fast rules um, I was at a, a local note meetup in Boulder last week um, and it was attended by a lot of very experienced real estate investors but they were new for the most part new to notes and the speaker was showing some examples of note deals that she had done and she was getting a lot of questions about well what should this percentage be or what should that ratio be and I could tell everybody was looking for really hard and fast rules um, the problem with that I think is there are so many variables that go into one of these notes that you know it's good to have guidelines for for different things that, that you're kind of looking for and ranges but you know, it's hard to key on one of the 10 variables and say this is a, you know, a hard and fast rule. So I think of like, um, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, there's more like guidelines, right, than, than rules. But that being said, a lot of people kind of target 15%. I think um, mileage varies, but it, but it's always good. This is a really quick and dirty way to get an idea of what, what your return is going to be on the note. Now, for this, what I think is is more accurate and gives you a better picture of the value will be the IRR, the internal rate of return. Um, but before we can calculate that, we need to verify the number of payments remaining. So they call this an estimate. Um, and whether they call it an estimate or not, I always like to go back and verify how many payments are left. And we do that in an Excel function uh, called number of periods or N per, so N P E R. That's the formula you want. And then when you add the parentheses, it pops up uh, what you're actually going to need. So the rate, the interest rate, the payment, and then the present value. Um, and in this case, future value will be zero because we're assuming they've, this is the number of periods to pay the note off. Um, so in Excel, it's really important to remember that. When it's doing these financial calculations, so with an interest rate and a payment, the time increment has to be the same. So because our payments are in monthly terms, we need to include a monthly interest rate. If somehow our payments were annual, which I don't know if that's even ever happens in a note, I've never seen it, um, then your interest rate would be annual. So we want you need to keep everything in the same terms. So what that means is, We've got our annual interest rate here, but we need to input the monthly interest rate. So we just include, whoops, this, and we divide by 12 to get the annual rate. We're gonna put our payment. 
and then uh, present value of the note that will always be negative and that's the present value this is for the loan itself so this is from the borrower perspective so this will be the UPB not our price okay and that actually matches the estimate that's over here okay so we'll do that and actually looks like all of these values line up which is good sometimes you know the borrower might be ahead or behind on payments and um, you know sometimes you'll get tapes and they'll estimate although they'll put the number of payments based on the maturity rate that's actually on the note but if the borrower is ahead or behind you know on payments they may not actually be tracking to that so you know that can cause your numbers to be off by a little bit so now that we verified that um, we can do our IRR oops and for that this is just an interest rate so the um, Excel formula for an interest rate is just rate okay number of periods here for the payment receive each one present value now because this is my internal rate of return you know, this is from my perspective so this is based on the price that I'm paying so to be negative the price and in you know to elaborate a little bit on why the present value is negative if you don't put the negative in you'll get an error um, if you think about the cash flows from my perspective as the investor I'm paying you know in this case eighteen thousand nine hundred sixty dollars out and then I'm getting a positive 325 back uh, every month. Now, the other thing though is because my payments and number of payments are all in terms of months, if I just hit enter here, 1%, this is, this is actually giving me my monthly interest rate, right? Because I said with, with Excel, it doesn't, it, it doesn't know which things are supposed to be in in months or or years so it just treats them all the same um, so to get this to an annual I need to multiply this by 12 boom so <clears throat> now we've got our IRRs and to me I think this is a little better oops a view of what my real return is going to be the reason that the one year ROI is different than the IRR is because as the borrower makes payments, they're paying off part of that UPB, so that UPB is dropping as you go along. So I think that the IRR gives you a better overall picture um, of the return. And, and you'll kind of notice that the, the fewer the number of payments, so if this thing's about to be paid off soon, the bigger the gap you're going to get between the ROI and the IRR. So here we've got just 90 payments left, you know, there's like an 8% gap. This thing, there's, you know, about almost 30 years left, you know, and that gap converges as the number of payments goes out to infinity, then those numbers kind of collapse. They, they converge together. Um, but, but I think this is a better uh, representation of the financial value because it, it's kind of independent of the, the term of the loan. This really tells you what what you're getting. Um, the other thing investors look at a lot is the, of course, the percentage of UPB. You know, a lot of people have different rules around that. They say they pay no more than 80% of UPB or of, for a performing loan. Um, again, this is one where I think mileage varies quite a bit. So, but it's always good to check and kind of understand where you're sitting. And on this tape, these are pretty darn high I mean you get these up in the 90s that's um you, you know that's that's pretty pricey although um, you, you know the returns are not terrible actually these IRs are, are lower than what I've been targeting I've been targeting above 13 lately and, I, and I've been able to buy I think good notes at those rates so actually on this tape I didn't bid um, on any of these but the other thing to look that I look at too on a performing note I call it the dollar discount so I like to pay attention to how much room do I have between the unpaid balance and what I paid so UPP minus price 
And this is important because, you know, most of these performing notes that are on the secondary market, if they're notes that have been around for a while, you know, especially like some of these that don't have a lot of payments left, um, they were probably non-performing at some point, and then somebody got them to re-perform. Um, you know, if that never happened, they probably wouldn't be on the secondary market. Or, you know, these might be ones that were, um, you know, recently originated, you know, possibly through seller finance. There's probably not a long history. So there's always the risk of these, even though they're performing loans and maybe they've been performing for 12 months. Um, you know, you got to be prepared in case they, they go into a non-performing state. So what's kind of interesting is if we look at these loans up here, where we're getting these higher ROIs and higher IRRs, that dollar discount is pretty skinny, right? It's one two thousand dollars so if this goes non-performing and I've got to go down the non-performing exit routes uh, whether it's trying to get them to reperform or you know all the way through foreclosure um, that that's expensive right I'm gonna have attorney fees I'm gonna have different servicing fees it's you're gonna spend some money so so if I'm spending you know say a hundred percent of UPB and now I have to put more money into this because it became non-performing I can get upside down um, pretty pretty fast so you kind of want to mine that that gap what's interesting is too these these ones at the bottom that had the lower interest rates I mean some of these sub 10% really pretty crappy um, but there's a lot more dollar discount so they're lower return lower risk so you know overall that directionally <laughs> makes sense um, you know the pricing on these still didn't um, work for me, I think you can do better. So anyhow, I hope that helped you learn how to calculate ROI and IRR and gives you some thoughts on how to analyze performing notes. This is by no means exhaustive. Um, obviously, there are a bunch of other variables that we didn't talk about here, really. Um, you know, the payment history, um, you know, location of the property, condition of the property, you know, information on the, the borrower, if they've been in bankruptcy, you know, there's there's a million other factors, right? So while these numbers are critically important, um, the actual IRRs that you're going to want to target for a given note are really going to be a function of, uh, you know, all these other variables that that go into it. So again, you know, your goal is, is guidelines a little more than rules. So anyhow, hopefully that helps, and I'll see you again next time.